our mindset in the beginning was that it wasn't no money in Barbara. So why was we doing it? And that's what we was thinking. But Chin, his talks was all about business. He never told us, and I can say this, and I can get Terrell, anybody to vouch for me. He never said we was going to be rich cutting hair. He never said He never said we was going to be wealthy cutting hair. He always would tell us about owning business. If you get rich by owning stuff, you get wealthy by owning things, by being the first to do it, by stuff like that. He never talked about the working person. He never said, hey, get behind that chair and work for the rest of your life and you're going to be all right. He never told us that. The school we came from, that's what they preached every day. She ain't never said we was gonna get rich behind that chair. So the mentality we always had was we gotta own something. You know, we got if we gonna be wealthy, we gotta own something. And Terrell had went out first and bought a shop called Studio Style. Beautiful shop. But what Terrell had to do, even though it was Terrell's shop, he had to get Chin to act like he owned it, cause then nobody respect Terrell. <laughs> you remember that Chin? How we had to every time we got it, Terrell would get on us about something. He wouldn't do it. He'll call Chin and be like, man, it ain't my shop, it's Chin's shop. Whenever he want to make rules. You know, that's what he would do. Because we, Chin was always the person that people, you know, they respected. Because he would always shoot from the hip. So they felt like if Chin was involved, oh, it must be legit. So we always had that mentality. If Chin was behind it, it must be legit. Now, everybody don't think that way. You know, and, and Chin, though, there's people out there now that don't feel that same way about Chin. But he got a group of people that was there with him from day one that know him. And we would go to the ends of the earth for the guy because we know how he fought for us. And so the mentality started changing once I bought my, once I was able to get that shot from Chin and I started seeing that you do get more, what you get wealth by ownership and by being the first to do it, by being the first to start this, the first to do that. And we was able to see that in Chin's life by what he was doing, and we made it go to our life by doing the same thing. And so that's how it changed for me, Chin. And we stopped thinking about being drug boys for the rest of our life, and we started thinking about owning stuff. Even if we wasn't barbers, even if we wasn't good uh, haircutters, and we didn't know how to fade the best and stuff like that, we knew we could run it, and that's what counted to us. As long as we running it, we ain't gotta be the best. All we gotta do is have people around us who can do it. And as long as they can do it good, then that's gonna make us look like the best. So it made Chin look like the best because everybody around him did it. And we saw that and we we took heed to that and we started doing the same thing. And we got that same respect he got now because we did that. And, and through the years, I've graduated over 200 students. Since July the 1st, I've I've only had one person fail to stay bored out of 40. I mean, 40 and old, and that comes from the stuff I learned from back then about being a people person, about being a leader, and about meaning what you say and saying what you mean. All you got is your word, and you told us that, and we saw it coming into permission in, in schools now, and that's why I get the respect I get in the industry, not because I'm the best fader, because they know I'm going to do everything I can to make sure they successful. Because I know some chin told a long time ago, I want everybody around me to eat. That way won't nobody ask for none of my food. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure everybody around me eat and eat good. That way you ain't got to ask for none of my food. You got your own food. And then you can get your, share your food with somebody else. And so that's the way I, I live my life. And that's the way I teach. And, that's the, and that came from that mentality, that teaching from along from that world class university, and that came from that mentality of people want to be and being taught, you know, taught that the way I teach. And I, you know, I, I ain't got no shame to say that I'm a bad boy when it comes to teaching. I'm a bad boy, and I mean that. And that came from that that, that guy right there, and not because he taught the book, it's because he taught life. And my students love the way I teach because I teach life. I, I teach the book, I know the book, I can tell you what page number stuff is, but more important, I teach life. So when I meet a student, I treat them like a person, not like a student. I treat them like a human being. I wanna know where you've been in. I wanna know, I spend, I spend the first week about values and beliefs. That's my first week of school when you start with me. Because I wanna know what you value. I wanna know what you believe. And it, it, it ain't about you know trying to make you be a Christian or trying to make you follow God. No, nah, it's about I need to know who you are for me to teach you the right way. A lot of teachers, they don't care about the student, who they are, what they done been through. All they did is, uh, it's just some money. It's, some, it's another number. No, 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 no. You got to get to know who you teach. And the, the best way to know them is when you first meet them, tell them your story. And that's all I've been doing since I met you. Because that's all he did was tell his story. That's all he did for us. 
will tell his story, and that's what I do now. I tell my story to my students. I let them know that I ain't, I ain't no bigger than them. I came from the slum just like they did, but look what I did. And I always share with them the person that showed me that, but, and look what they did. You know what I mean? I stay chasing him, and I mean that, and I chase him in a bad way, but because I know if I was his first graduate from his school, then I need to be at a certain place because he who he is. Just imagine if the first, you know, if his first graduate from his school, the first person he taught, didn't do nothing with Bob. His story wouldn't be as big, but his story is even bigger because the first person that graduated from his first school now has a school. That's major. That changed the whole story. That changed the whole story. So now his story is even bigger now. You know what? His story is bigger than even what it was. And I don't know if he know it now. But now his story is even bigger than what it was now. So now he got something else to add when he talk about himself. At the end of the day, not only and you know, not only did I get my own school, but the first person graduated from my school got a school. Now it took me, you know, 20 years, but I got it. <laughs> if you want to be a real school owner, you got to love to teach. And you got to love people. You know what I mean? You got to love being around people. You got to love to teach. Then when you go home in your private time, you might be a straight a-hole. I don't know. But while you in the public eye at this school, you got to be uncles. You got to be the uncle, the auntie, the brother, the sister, the mama, the daddy, the police, the judge, the wife. You got to be all that to these students because they need that. They need that. So, yeah, you, the mindset got to be you got to be ready to be in control and be ready to put all your all in. Go in 100%, especially on the teaching part. Because anybody can get a school, but it take it take a real person to keep it. My tuition is $4,950. If you pay payments, which is monthly payments, you're going to pay $500 a month, which adds up. Because I got a finance fee of $1,050. So it costs you $6,000 if you pay monthly. It costs you $49.50 if you pay up front. And that's for my first 20 students on this first class. Then after that, I'll probably go up a little bit. I find students by promoting and going to events. So every hair show I'm at, every event I'm at, and I walk around like this all day with my barber uniform on. And you know what people ask me? Do you cut hair? Yeah, and guess what? I got a school too, for real? I walk around with this all day. I ain't too good to walk around with my cape all day. So people can ask me, that's how I build my clientele. That's how I'm building my students. Same way. <laughs>